Well, Shane, hey, thank you so much for joining us for the Mic Drop Events podcast. Um, I'm we we got to the chance to meet in person pre COVID. You came to our office. We're both in the Atlanta space, and I know that you and your company have to had to make some adjustments from the pandemic to serving clients. And um, you literally just told me like the three things that Urban Enterprises does is staffing, distribution, and AKA like promotion for events. And then uh, you do some event planning also for, you said specifically for real estate clients. So you were just telling me some fun statistics about some meal delivery for uh, in partnership with some catering companies and some people uh, hosting virtual events. So I'd love to know, like, w- how did that come about? Why did that become a thing? Well, so thank you for having me, first of all. I'm a big fan of what you guys do. I'm a big fan of Billy and the whole culture creation that you all uh, promote. Um, I have been so inspired by you all and what y'all what y'all have done with your former office and your team and the way you come into companies and help them motivate their teams and create a true sense of camaraderie and culture. So big fan over here. Um, But so I run a business that's been around for over 40 years. My mom started the business and I run it now. And we were rocking and rolling, had this unbelievable 2019 you know, started with the Super Bowl, which was essentially the Super Bowl of my whole career. Uh, The middle of 2019, we got this incredible job with um, Nickelodeon and Viacom um, to help staff all of Slime City, which was a 14-week engagement, which had it been one week would have been the largest um, project of my career, but it was 14 weeks. Um, it was amazing. Um, right after that ended, we went into fourth quarter, which is, you know, holidays. And that for us starts normally in September. And it was um, an epic 2019. So we were going into 2020 with a real positive spirit <laughs> with planning to continue that positive, you know, up trajectory. And then obviously COVID hit. And when you are a company that's all about people and bringing people together, and everything that I do is about people. Um, I, I was floored. You know, we lost 80% of our business on uh, March 12th. So March 11th, NBA canceled, you know, March tw- uh, 12th, I was sitting in a two hour meeting and I was watching underneath my phone as just first people were just pushing the, their events, you know, oh, we're going to postpone a few weeks, postpone and then cancel, cancel, cancel. And it was, you know, I, I, there was nobody to turn to for advice because obviously nobody had ever been through anything like this. Um, My mom who started, you know, this company in the seventies, you know, she couldn't even provide any type of insight beyond just stay positive, things will work out, you know, stay the course. So we had um, uh, the first few weeks of the pandemic, the clients, it was just kind of rearranging everything. We had to let a bunch of people go. So rearranging um, client management, we had to figure out what we were going to do about our office. I cleaned out my storage unit. So it was a lot of just like organizing, um, getting people on unemployment. You know, we um, helped our, our staff in the field kind of navigate that situation. So that was like the first few months. And then it was like, oh my God, what are we going to do? And we had some clients that threw me some projects, I think, because they felt bad for me. Um, But over the summer, we were uh, 97% down. So it was shockingly bad. And um, one of our clients asked us if we could do meal delivery. (laughs) And I'm like, we don't do meal delivery, but okay, Um, I'll say yes to anything. And we kind of took on the work just as a way to keep people working not really, um, we weren't really looking at it as like a huge revenue generator, but just as a challenge to, to try and to see if there was, if we could do it. And essentially one of our clients had a virtual event and they had um, a catering company already lined up and they needed somebody to deliver the hundred meals that they had ordered for their sponsors and VIPs. But the trick is all the meals have to be delivered within a short window. They want them all there by the start time of the event. They want them all delivered, you know, very professionally and, you know, they still need to be hot or whatever. So we used our staffing skills and our distribution kind of um, executional skills to figure out how to do it efficiently, how to do it um, 
where we could actually make a little bit of money and uh, where the client was satisfied. And we have now, uh, the word perfected would be a, a big word because we certainly still face some issues, but we have figured out how to do it. And so since we've done it, I don't know, 25, 30 times, and some of the, our catering partners have tr learned to like truly lean on us to be able to execute that. And I don't see that as a forever type of um, project for us, but I think virtual events are going to certainly continue through the end of the year and hybrid virtual in-person events might be a thing forever. So I'm hoping that we can continue to provide that service um, now that we've like figured out how to do it well. Yeah, I'm I'm so fascinated that by that because 25 to 30 times, like there's a lot of lessons that can be learned in doing something 25 to 30 times, especially yeah. when you've done it, you haven't ever done it before. And I feel like that's part of just the events industry in general is like, yeah, I think we can make that happen. Sure. Let's, let's try. Like, yeah, sure, we can do that. Oh, gosh, what did I just commit myself to? Absolutely. <laughs> something well, like that. That's how I've kind of grown our business over the 20 years that I've been involved is saying yes. So we say yes, and then we figure it out. So it's um, allowed us to, to try and succeed. We've also tried and failed. Um, there are certainly things that I've said yes to that after a couple of times, I'm like, yeah, no, we're not going to do this. Um, it's too hard. There's other experts that are out there that do that. But in this case, you know, the only other option would be like a courier company or using volunteers and neither of those are the right solution. So it works with us. It kind of falls still within what we actually do. So it's not too far off base and, and we've been doing it well. Um, one of the times we did it maybe in the first five or six times was that day there was huge storms in Atlanta and all the trees went down and we, our client was like, I was like, can we reschedule? Can we do this tomorrow? And she's like, nope. And I was like, okay, all right. I mean, it was the absolute worst day to be driving around doing deliveries in Buckhead. Um, so if we could do that day, you know, we can do any day. Like rain doesn't even bother us anymore. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, for because I mean, I 100% agree with you. I think that virtual events are, are going to continue. Now, they might not be once the pandemic is over, we might not see as many virtual or online events as we see right now. And then hybrid events, I definitely think are going to continue also. So I'm curious if someone is uh, looking to deliver that many meals, you, you said a hundred meals in like a four hour, two hour window with our virtual event. Like what's, what's one big lesson that you guys learned, which would be like the benefit of hiring someone like you to, uh, they're like, yeah, this was like the biggest thing that we had to figure out. And so that they can either try it on their own. And then if they can't, they can call you guys. So what, what would be something that you've learned? Um, well, trying to capture all the information from the end consumer at the beginning. So if they're not home, can we call their cell phone? Or if they don't answer the door, can we call their cell phones? We need their cell phone number. What if they have a gate? What do you do? And for a lot of these virtual events, the sponsors are the ones that are receiving the meals. A lot of these sponsors live in like gorgeous homes with gates. So you can't just leave like a bagged meal outside the gate. So we need a contact number inside the house or um, a cell phone number so we can get past the gate. And it sounds so simple, but those are the, the, the it's the mosquitoes that get you, right? It's like the small little details um, that can make or break you. And when we have all the information ahead of us, like at the beginning, our job is so much easier rather than when we're trying to do a delivery and all of a sudden there's a gate and we're like, oh man, no one's picking up, picking up the gate. No one's picking up the phone. What are we going to do? And it's, again, it, it, it's about fulfilling our commitment to making all these deliveries. <laughs> so we've got to do it and we've got to figure it out. The other thing is always have like an extra meal or two, just in case. Um, we recently delivered one to the wrong person and we had an extra meal. So it didn't, we didn't have to go and knock on someone's door and be like, Hey, so you thought you had this amazing meal for two people, but I'm going to have to take it back. And I hope you didn't touch anything. You know, instead we had an extra meal and that made our mistake not quite so terrible. And then this random human got an incredible, nice present. <laughs> 
That's so funny. I I can I I would be like sweating if I was that person that had to be like, oh gosh, I totally. delivered it to the wrong person. Like totally. this is this is A, and I meant to put it to C. Be like, uh, your downstairs neighbor or your next door neighbor was supposed to get that. That would so be, that would be crazy. And it's a meal, you know. It's not like yeah. it's like a an Amazon package where you wouldn't have opened it. You're probably opening it and you're like, oh wow, a cheese plate and you know shrimp and whatever. <laughs> So yeah, because I can you, because one of the things you mentioned is it's a professional delivery, right? It's not like an Uber Eats delivery where it yes. comes in this bag and it's stapled with the receipt yes. on top. It's probably a little bit different than that. So, okay, well, um, so we talked about the the distribution side and like the lessons you learned there, and those are those are two amazing lessons. I mean, having the cell phone number or some kind of contact number is one like small detail that could easily go overlooked because there there's a lot of people even like gated apartment communities right yeah. and you can't there they might not have someone add, like a door person at the gate that kind of yeah. thing so that's really practical and then the extra meal or two that i could definitely see that being a benefit well i'm curious so now that the world is starting to open up are you guys getting more event projects that are more in person and if so, like what kinds of projects are you helping your clients with? What are they doing? So yes, we are seeing more um, in-person work, um, but we're seeing it. It's funny, the, the same clients that were doing stuff at Christmas time, they're the ones that are doing stuff now. And I don't know if they're more um, risky is the wrong word, but they're maybe more risk tolerant um, and willing to, to do things. Those are the same clients. I'm not seeing people do things um, that, in December, they were like, no, we don't want to, you know, it's the same people who are willing to try. And I, what I can tell is that people are flocking to these events like crazy. People are so excited to have something, you know, something to do. Um, and from what I have heard, people that are planning um, beer and wine events and food tasting events, everything is selling out. So I think the community is ready to be in person. Um, but what I'm seeing, um, you know, mixed use development properties, outdoor properties, they're the ones who are doing things. I, I really haven't seen that much event work in traditional enclosed malls. Um, and I do a lot of work with real estate. So a lot of my um, clients are office buildings, apartment buildings, condo projects, um, and, and shopping malls or mixed use developments. So I'm seeing things in the outdoor properties more. Um, we've been doing a lot of work um, providing, still providing like health ambassadors, you know, people taking temperatures or people reminding people to wear masks while there's still a mask mandate inside. And um, so we're doing that kind of work. But again, that's kind of been consistent. Um, Got it. What we're seeing, obviously, theaters are kind of starting up. Um, they figured out now, okay, let's do outdoor theater or intent theater. And so we're, we're seeing some of that work come through. Um, and I don't know, it's, it'll be interesting to see what happens over the summer, you know, and then I'm praying for a crazy fourth quarter. Yeah. Well, I'll be hoping for that for you guys as well. And I'm curious about the health ambassadors because that might be something that might be an ongoing project for a while now, right? Right. Like the, the vaccine's starting to roll out and people are definitely starting to come together. So when you when you get called up for like a health ambassador, like what is something that you recommend to your, your clients? If they're specifically, like if someone's brand new and they've never done an in-person event post COVID, like in this, uh, I don't even know what to call it, like the COVID era, I guess. What What is something that like is really helpful to have an event as far as a, a health ambassador? Like what are they doing? What are they saying? I did see a picture on the Urban Enterprises Instagram of like people holding like a sign. So right. what kind of things are they doing? What are they saying? Well, I think it, the first question is how uh, how strict or intense is the client about their COVID policy? So it's, and then that requires a softer touch or a firmer touch. So is it just, we're walking around with signs saying, keep your mask up, or are we literally saying, going around to individuals and saying, you've got to wear a mask. Here's one. You've got to wear a mask. Here's one, or you're going to have to leave. I'm going to get security. And it just depends on the client and their, their approach to it. I also think it kind of depends on their insurance company and their insurance company's approach 
to how strict the client has to be. So, um, you know, obviously we've done temperature checks for loads of projects. Um, and again, that's also an, an, like, will that continue, you know? And now if we'll checking validate uh, vaccination cards, is that gonna be a thing? You know, I read something about um, the Hawks game for the playoffs. They're gonna have a section that's for um, vaccinated people. You know, so what you just show your vaccination card, do you have to match it against an ID? I don't know, but that's going to be a personnel type of um, job. Someone's going to have to do that. And then how strict are you? What if someone's like, oh, I left my vaccination card at home? Are you like, sorry, you got to go sit somewhere else? You know, it, but it depends on the client's risk tolerance, I guess. Got it. Yeah, that's that's fascinating. I hadn't heard that about the vaccinated section versus an unvaccinated section. That's the first time I've ever heard of anybody doing something like that. I did also hear that the Braves were just recently at like full capacity. So 38,000 people in the stadium. So it's interesting how like it's starting to happen. And I heard I heard someone one time say that it's uh, for the events industry, like private and corporate events, it's a good thing to have sports go first because then you get to A, learn from what they're doing and watch what they're doing because they're they're really be some of the first ones because a lot of times they're very tightly um, uh, com connected with the city or the state. Right. And then after they do it, then corporate like con concerts and stuff like that, they're like, well, the sports t people did it. So why can't we do it? So well, I think that you, that's interesting. And if you think about it in the reverse, it was sport canceling that then led everybody else to cancel. You know, the NBA came out first, really. And then it was the final four that came out and it was sports kind of led the way. And whether or not pe people were talking about it before, but that was like the huge mic drop, right? NBA canceling final four. Oh my God. That was it. Yeah, that's so true. I, I hadn't thought about that actually, because it was, it was, because it was such a big deal specifically for where we are. The city of Atlanta was, we were so excited. We had the Super Bowl, and then we had the NCAA uh, tournament. And when that canceled, everyone was like, uh oh. And then it was a couple of other ones that canceled also. So you're a hundred percent right there. Well, Shane, this has been such a fun conversation and, and so enlightening. I love the fact that we got really nitty gritty and we talked high level, like future and what are people doing? Um, so I'm curious, um, we, the name of our podcast is Mic Drop Events, right? So I've got, you can answer either or question. You don't have to do both. Okay. What, what is either like a mic drop statement that you can leave with our listeners if they're wondering like, hey, I can, for promotion or distribution, like think about it in this way, or you could take it on the practical side and say, hey, this has really worked for promotions and distributions in this COVID era. And this is something that we can all learn from. Wow. Um... Well, I would say my biggest work takeaway from the COVID era is that everything takes way longer <laughs> in COVID times. Um, so for promotion or distribution, um, you can't count on all the businesses being open at the same time. Now people have alternative hours than they used to have. So if we're going to distribute a thousand posters, um, it takes us about double the amount of time. So because businesses have closed or businesses, maybe they were open for lunch before, now they're only open for dinner and we don't really distribute at night. So just be prepared that, and, and staffing too. You know, if you used to be able to draw upon staff, at, you know, and, and be able to count on 10 people, maybe now just know that if you need 10, you gotta find 20 because things happen, all of a sudden there's a COVID exposure, they're out, now someone's out for two weeks. So just kind of over-prepare that things take longer than, than they used to. That's so good. I hadn't even thought about that. Like if you need to get 10 people, we've, we've had that happen on a small scale mm -hmm. where we've been like, all right, we've got these projects, we've got this team of five that are going here. And then like one person comes into contact with like either their roommate or something just happens. And so you've got to be prepared for that. That is so good. Shane, hey, this was awesome. Um, well, uh, thank you so much. And if you're listening to this, I really want you to uh, tune in because Shane is an amazing person running a really cool company called Urban Enterprises here out of the Atlanta area. So Shane, where can people find you on the internet, on social media and your company on the website? Yes. So we are at urbanenterprises.com. Um, you can find us on Insta at UE Atlanta and on LinkedIn at Urban Enterprises as well. So we are on all the things. 
Um, All and, of the things. <laughs> yeah. And please reach out to me individually, um, Shane at urbanenterprises.com. I'd love to connect. Awesome. I'm writing that down and we'll put that in the show notes. But okay. Shane, it has been such a pleasure. Thank you so much for joining us. This was fun. Thank you so much. I appreciate you having me on here.